Hello and welcome to Old Savannah City Mission, Savannah's five-star gospel rescue missions ministry on the air. My name is Steve Evans. I happen to be a, an Episcopal priest, but I am also chaplain at the Old Savannah City Mission. And I'd like to talk to you today about the mission, but I'd also like to bring some of the ministry of the mission straight into your living room. We have, as you know, a, may know, we have a feeding program and a night shelter, which so many people take advantage of. Last, um, just this past week, I came into the mission. You have to be flexible when you're working here. I came into the mission um, ready to do my job with people in the full-time school, and they didn't have a preacher that night. And I want to tell you, we are here because we believe that the gospel changes lives, that a personal relationship with Jesus changes lives. That's why we're a gospel rescue mission, and you can count on it that if there's going to be a meal given or a bed uh, made available, people are going to find out about the gospel. They're going to find out about Jesus Christ. And that night when I came in, there was nobody, um, sometimes it happens, there was nobody bringing the words. So I was asked to come up. And here's what I was sharing, because I looked out at a sea of people. It was a sweltering, hot day in Savannah. And many people had come in, be able to get that bath, that shower rather, that, hot, that meal, and that clean bed for the night, that exchange of clothes. Easy to see why they would want to come in. But I know something else. I know that in their spirit, they're dragging. Now, some of the people know Jesus Christ, some of them don't. But the message that was on my heart may be a message that will um, be a, uh, something that is touching yours too, because I've learned something, and I put this in huge letters up on the board. I've learned that the thing that changes me the most is still the thing, the thing that is hardest for me to believe in that life-changing way. And that is that God, the Father, and Jesus really, really, really love me full speed ahead all the time. Whenever I can connect with that, my day changes. And so I told them, uh, you know, I, I told them I suspected it was the same for them. I saw a lot of heads nodding all over the room. And I said, Isn't this is a hard thing to get because we just, we just think God's attitude towards us is going to be based on our attitude or it's going to be based on how well we're doing. And, you know, they're not mental slouches. They know that they're not doing all that well. That's why they need the assistance that we provide. That's why they're leaning into places like this mission to try to get their help. And yet that's, that, that leads the question on the inside, how could possibly God love me? I don't even like me half the time. And, and I know what that's like because as a Christian, I've struggled with a lot of the same questions. You know, as a Christian, you can be living for the Lord every day and still not feel like you're doing good enough. You can be living for the Lord every day, and you still got things that you need to repent of, that you realize, I'm falling short here, I'm not hitting the mark there, there are things that I'm leaving done over here, oh my God, what do you think about me? Well, I want to tell you, as a young, youngish priest in Savannah back in 1992, there was one message that I felt reluctant to bring to people, and it was, I knew I was going to, I knew I needed to, and it was that God loves you. And how can you bring that message unless you're really convinced he loves you? And so in the period of a few years, I was praying about this, and God brought me to a place of realizing, oh, God, you really, really do love deeply each and every one of your children all the time. And I know that. I know that now because I realize that's how you feel about me. Now, I want to take you on a part of that journey because... If we can prove it at the hardest point, it's going to become true at all the other points. God not only loves you, I'm speaking to you in Savannah, wherever you may be, whatever you may be going through, whatever you may be feeling, whatever may be going right in your life, whatever may be going wrong in your life, whatever is arguing against you, whatever, whatever is still hanging out there, you know, and you're desperate to see how it's going to work out, and it doesn't seem to be working out, no, God loves you. You need to know this. God loves you. And it changes everything when you connect up with it. And how, do I, how can I be assured of that? Let's hear what he says in Zephaniah. In Zephaniah chapter 3, 
verse 17, the Lord says something absolutely amazing. He says, the Lord, your God, in your midst, the mighty one, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I want to tell you, for those of us that need to lay hold of this, that God actually loves us, this is the high water mark. Come up and hit this. Come up and touch base with this. God not only loves you, but he rejoices over you. How? How is that possible when we're not doing everything right, when there's so many reasons why God ought to be displeased? Well, I took this to the Lord once in my quiet time, and immediately five reasons came to me when I asked the question, God, how can you be delighted in me? I, I don't get this passage. I want to believe it. I know it must be true, but I need to connect with it. And immediately five, five major reasons why he delights in us came to me. The first one is, is that he delights in us because he sees us exactly as we are, as he created us to be. The second major reason is that he delights in us because we said yes to Jesus. He not only sees us as he created us to be and as he's redeeming us to be, he sees us deep down as who we are as new creation, but he, as that new creation. And he never loses sight of that. He doesn't get his eyes stuck on the blemishes. He sees the gold that's really inside. And then he loves us because we've said yes to Jesus. It gives God the opportunity. He never loses the perspective that he's rescuing all of humanity that will say yes to him. He's rescuing us from burning in hell, and he doesn't want that for any of his children. And the stakes are incredibly high, and he never loses sight of that. So yes, he is always delighted that we've said yes to Jesus. And then there's a third reason, and that is that he is love. You know, loving the difficult people comes hard to us, but it comes easy to God. He delights in loving us. I wish I could talk more about that. The fourth reason is tremendous. He delights in us because he loves the work he's assigned himself to do, which is to be our savior. And he's a guy, he is a God who loves his work. And the final reason is, is that um, the blood truly does cover our sins. If we only could see from God's perspective how full and complete the redemptive work of Jesus is, we would know that the sin debt is completely out of the way. Now that's a lot of reasons why God loves us, and yet it's one of the hardest things to really get across, to lay hold of, and it changes us when we get it.